All right, guys. Welcome back to the Pulse. We just got done talking about uh, Star Tail parting <laughs> and his looming <laughs> decision. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about TSL disbanding. We talked about foreign players in Code S. We also talked a little bit about the hardest one beta changes. <laughs> Lauren Lee, what are people talking about in chat? That's what I want to know. Um, first of all, everyone kind of wants to know why I'm in tucked away in the corner. <laughs> I look a little, a little small. That's Chance how even has a better seat than me. That's how far the power cord reached on your laptop. Ch Ch Chance, <laughs> <laughs> Chance has more useful things to say than you, Lauren. Oh. 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 Yes. Oh. All right. Just kidding, darling. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's keep moving forward here. Wait, wait, Benjamin. I have a question okay. for you. What you got? Chat is full of questions, and I have to get some of these through. Sure. Pick a number between one and three. One. Pick three. Well, the number three, between two, one okay. and three is six. two. <laughs> <laughs> he was definitely about to say six. <laughs> All right, so this question is from Velvel Belkin. All right. Is there any Zerg counter to the Oracle in early game? No, there's not. Sorry, guy. Can't be done. Okay, we, well, yep. there Mittens. we go. Sport I guess thanks for playing. So right. we have time for <laughs> you need evolution chain to build a sport crawl. Crawl. I, I do want to point out that, <laughs> that sport crawl, like, static defense yeah. is actually really good yeah, against yeah, yeah. Oracle. You don't need evolution yeah. chain, yeah, right? Until they I get two. The, I guess the point dead. is still that <laughs> that's true. you can only have it in a certain position, and there might always be like a weak spot somewhere in the middle line. I guess what it just means is like if the sport crawl is a little bit out of position, if you just manually control, like not attack move, but actually just like keep it on the edge and then right click, right click, right click, like the, uh, the speed that you kill workers is, is still it's absolutely really ridiculous. Sick. Like really before sick. the animation goes off, the drone is dead already. You can click <laughs> next. My <laughs> laser didn't even touch it no, yet. The drone's just like, like, the like okay, I'm the dead. Oracle. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's like playing Golden Eye, you know, with the Golden Gun. It's like one. <laughs> <laughs> I like All it. right. Uh, for the first time in the history of StarCraft II inside of Korea, mm -hmm. we have two major content organizers vying for the same audience, competing in the same space. Of course, we're talking about GOM TV and, uh, and OGN. We're talking about uh, ESF and KESPA. We're talking about this whole concept of the GSL versus Pro League. Uh, I want to ask you guys the question. Can only the strong survive, or can these guys coexist? Josh, let's start with you. Well, looking at the history of these two organizations, CASPA was founded in 2000. It's 11 member corporations. It managed broadcasting, leagues, and player conditions for Brood War, but it had some issues with Blizzard in terms of intellectual property. Because of that, when StarCraft II was about to be released, Blizzard gave StarCraft II broadcasting rights to GOM TV. GOM is a popular streaming service in South Korea. They are also the leader of ESF, the Esports Federation. The ESF is made up of teams outside of KESPA in South Korea. So right now, like you said, Ben, there's two different organizations pumping out StarCraft II content, pretty much two different leagues. Can both of them survive or only one survive? I think that it's going to come up to this trade embargo being lifted in October of what the final verdict is going to be. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's definitely going to influence it a lot because right now the price point for players are different in each associated region. Of course, the Kespa players, they might be, let's say, I, I don't know, I'm just throwing out numbers, let's say like $1,000 more expensive just because they're a huge uh, televised company. Whereas the GOM players might be a thousand dollars. We just slower. talked about how these ESF teams apparently don't have any money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that but comes like down a proven to. product, right? You want to go for proven products that are something that's even growing. So yeah. it, it very well might be if the uh, the the GOM GOM TV and ESF if they don't match that price point, we're going to see one of them, you know, just completely get destroyed in skill level. I mean, I th I think. Yeah, I agree, but at the same time, it's not like we even brought it up before. There's Team Eight. There's there's a Team Eight, which means that they don't have sponsors. They used to be Hwasong Oz, but when they lost their title sponsor. They lost their title player. They lost them to EG. But, but Kespa he's, kept he's them not on. lost. He's on loan. Yeah, yeah. He's he's on the stipulation. Loan. That's not. That's but like, if they pick up a sponsor, Jay Dong's gonna be like, peace, guys. But when they Been lost fun. the sponsor, what did Kespa do? They filled in, made sure that they were okay until they could find a sponsor. And l let's also think. I guess, but they, they also afforded lost. Jay Dong. Can you really say that any other team can afford Jadong in ESF? But they also lost like uh, another team. They lost the Air Force Ace, and then they had to replace them with the EGTL. And it's like, yep. well, 
you know, and they're, they're bringing in other people into the space. Kespa is not that strong either. If you look at some of their VODs, uh, they, their, their best views are, of course, EGTO. They're not doing that great in StarCraft 2. They came really late. Kespa thinks they can dominate the space away from GOM, but GOM has, I, in opinion, I love their production. Spot TV and, and OGN is great, but I love GOM's production. Yeah. Uh, they have better casters. I'm just, I'm, everyone can mutually agree on that. <laughs> they have because the best the other casters. Guys, they have the best casters. It doesn't matter. They have the best um, casters. Yeah. And, and they have a longer history. They have better storylines. Uh, they still have the most prestigious StarCraft 2 tournament gom has everything yeah they have a wtf priced premium ticket like i don't understand how anyone can afford to pay 150 bucks for all their stuff and not even get gstl but they do have angela kim so gom is winning in every department <laughs> i think for now they're still ahead and they're going to be ahead until kespa makes another massive power play like egtl i also think gom's a hell of a lot easier to work with uh gom reaches out to us we're able to reach back to them it's mm -hmm. it's very easy to reach across the aisle and uh and and open up a relationship it is incredibly difficult to talk to uh Kespa or or whatever that organization. I don't even know or how. Or even it get works. them to talk. They I, don't. They don't I, talk I've to tried. The they're tight-lipped. No. I've been, uh, I, I, I have had I've had one conversation with a guy, and I was like, "Hey, uh, let's try this." He's like, "Well, that that would have to get approved by my boss." I was like, "Okay, well, can we ask him?" Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Well, the Who strength to go to, to <laughs> the strength to of Gom, the Me. strength of Gom. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's exactly <laughs> what it was like. The strength of Gom definitely caters to the foreign audience. They've done a great job. It has definitely helped their numbers and to build it. Plus, they were very open with sending players out to, you know, mm -hmm. foreign tournaments. With MLG at first, that kind of fell apart, and now with the partnership they have with IPL, yeah. mm -hmm. and that you know helps the players and it helps the teams when they have those foreign eyes seeing these players come over. But you know, Caspa has had so much control over what has happened in South Korea. I mean, they are affiliated with the Olympic Committee for South Korea. Yeah. So they have more networking and maybe in higher places in the corporate well, world. I mean, maybe play. some things have to grow as well, because you just say that like GOM was very easy with sending over players. Uh, in the start of StarCraft 2, that was certainly different. I remember when I was still with ESL and trying to get the Koreans to the IM, that was actually quite a hassle, and it wasn't easy. Some players, yes, no, then it was okay until some player actually won a certain game. Nope, sorry, no, can't do anymore. But yeah, no, needless to say, over the last year, we've had an awesome we had pretty much at every career at every tournament we want to see but that's something that also grew it wasn't there from the very first tournament it wasn't from the first day so maybe Kespa is going to change as well the West know. had to prove themselves more or less in that sense and yeah. I think they definitely have and sure. Kespa is now sure. going to be more open to it yeah. but now they have had a tricky track record in the past here's something important to note also Kespa has a lot of history with OGN now OGN if you guys don't know they're the broadcasting company and Caspa is, let's say, the group of teams. So the group of teams are like, hey, we want to do this tournament. OGN, do you want to go ahead and produce this for us? And they're like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Now, they have a oh, relationship. And let me tell you, oh, poor Doa, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, their relationship hasn't been historically the best. In 2007, Brutal War was about to die at one point because there was just so much um, just... Uh, just political nonsense yep. going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, issues to, with to rights. Put it very, stuff like that. very nicely. It's political nonsense, and a lot of people thought it was Kespa just trying to put the ironclad on things, say, I am the one that's dictating everything. And to an extent, that's how it was. But well, what happened with StarCraft 2 as well? Yes. Mm. That, yeah. And that's why Blizzard stepped in, which was yeah. fantastic. I think Blizzard is actually one of the main reasons why there is some. No, there is life in Korea. I think sure. there are. Probably the most instrumental force over there. More so than anybody wants to know or realizes. But I'm just like proposing this. What stops GOM from really going to OGN and saying, well, now you have a competitor. Uh, you can go with me right now and broadcast my tournament on no, it's gotta be money. television. Uh, money it's and yeah, numbers. GOM money. never releases yeah. their numbers. That's true. But I think, you know, I mean, Kespa hasn't been getting the greatest numbers for StarCraft 2. Hmm. And... Gom might be. I mean, it took it took Kespa a while to transfer from four three to to sixteen by nine. I mean, yeah. because of the way that Brood War is, it was a, a full screen game and not a widescreen game. <coughs> so, because of that, and the technology and streaming is more in favor of Gom. Say what you will about the low quality of of the broadcast and the Gom much player. Much better now. I mean, it is much better. But I, I, so many people were so excited, even though that hurricane happened, that it was on Twitch mm -hmm. instead of the Gom player. But you know, Gom TV, the Gom player, that's the yeah. biggest media player in South Korea. That's why they use it. Uh, it it's going to be a process. It's not an event. But we're going to see what's going to happen with these ESF teams, which I think is a, uh, starting to be a big deal yeah. on what's happening between the yes. two. Mm -hmm. And in October, maybe the floodgates will open and everybody goes to Kespa. Maybe nothing will happen. I, we'll I argue that ESF teams, um, excuse me, I argue that Kespa teams uh, will be the best in the world 
six months. Uh, just because of after the trade trade agreement unlocks that's October 2013 after the trade agreement after know. Heart of the Swarm after these guys have had a, a solid year with the game in uh, the rigorous training environment that they've created for themselves with HOTS coming out and resetting the game kind with of HOTS thing. coming out and resetting the game that's, that's no. just kind of how I see you it happening so. I don't if, think so either nah I think I if think the so. Void Race stays the same <laughs> 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 Netherlands rises yeah. up again <laughs> Rod Amber's grubby I, I, I yeah. Yeah. You know, as long Razor as Razor Academy shows <laughs> sharps <laughs> <laughs> as long as as GOM keeps sticking to their strengths and works on their weaknesses, their strengths be in the foreign market, I think they're going to be okay. Uh, Kespa has a lot of strengths too. I really like their maps that they're putting out. Um, obviously, they have the best corporate sponsorships in Korea. I mean, they have KT, SK Telecom. They have Samsung. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's true though. Even though they have all these things going for them, they haven't performed that well in the up and downs GSL this season. Everyone expected them. Not a single Kessel player got through. Jadong, Flash, uh, Shy, who I thought was so sick. Fantasy, who lost in the up and downs mm -hmm. to Huck. Uh, and, and, you know, that's not even a Korean player from GOM. It's, it's, it's a guy from yeah. EG. Mm -hmm. So I think Kessel players still have a long way to go. It's not as close as it seems for now. But for now, I think, I think Ben's right. I'm I think six I'm months, Kessel players will catch up. I'm going to bring in a very controversial uh, blogger, I would say, who is FXO Boss. Uh, and recently, you know, he he talks about things. Some things are really right. Some things I feel have not come to fruition. But he said uh, immediately, Gom should just sell as much stuff to Kespa as soon as possible. And I just want to ask you guys about that. I mean, do you agree? This, this is most recent one. I know some people are like, "Oh my God, boss, uh, I'm man. all over you." And some people are like, "What are you doing, bro?" This is going to come down to the players, and if the players, as some players have said, they'd rather be on an ESF team than a Kespa team because they feel they have a little bit more freedom or they're able to be exposed more to the foreign market, then it's going to come down to what the players want, and that's going to be the catalyst of, of what league is going to survive. There's also so much behind the scenes that we just don't yeah. see, we yeah. just don't yeah. know about. So, I mean, that's, that's almost an impossible question to field. Um, for my part... Uh, I don't want one to kill the other. I love the Pro League format. It's a lot of fun to watch. GSL is, in my opinion, the premier individual league. Uh, I would like to see them both thrive, and uh, with a little bit of luck and you a little bit of you would like them. You would like to see them like that, but do you think it's uh, going to be like that? I don't know. I I really don't know. I, and I also think a lot of it comes down to Blizzard. Okay. To be completely honest. I with talked you. to Violet and Golden about this, by the way, and they both said that uh, they don't think Gom's going to be around in like two years. It's really unfortunate. Mm. Time will tell. I will say this, though. The Kespa discussion does segue nicely into our next talking point. A non-Korean player has joined a Kespa team. <coughs> We're going to talk about that when we get back. <laughs>